Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to how to calculate the thermal range of an IC or a chip or an integrated circuit, whatever you want to call it. And in this video, we're going to focus on linear regulators because that's what I often have to use this, this calculation for when I'm working with linear regulators. Before we get started, I'll just mention if you like what you see here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're already subscribed and you like the video, hit the thumbs up or leave a comment. And uh, also check out Forstronics.com for information on Forstronics design and manufacturing services. All right, let's get started. Okay, well, why worry about thermal effects? And I mentioned that what I'll cover here will work for any IC, but I'm gonna focus on linear regulators in this video. Now, what is a linear regulator? Well, if you've been using electronics, you should know it basically takes a higher input voltage and converts it to a lower output DC voltage. So if I, want to, if I have 12 volts or 24 volts and I wanna convert it to 3.3 or 5 volts, I can use a linear regulator. Now, linear regulators are great because they're low cost, they're easy to use compared to a DC to DC converter, which tends to be a little more complex to do the layout for and it's a little more expensive. But the drawback of a linear regulator is they act like a variable resistor. That's how they convert a dynamic variable resistor and that's how they convert the voltage from one level to another level. And because of their design, they're not very power efficient, so they can get really hot. And so we wanna make sure before we buy one, because often when you're working with linear regulators, if you just look at their banner specs, the what is their voltage range, what is their output voltage range, what is their output current, you can be fooled because if you don't take in effect some of the thermal characteristics, you could basically burn up your linear regulator. And in this video, I'm gonna use the LM317 as an example, which is a popular adjustable output linear regulator. Multiple companies make it. And as an example, I grabbed one and uh, you, I used a D-Pack version, which is the, just the package. This is what a D-Pack package looks like. And if we look at the specs, we have a max input voltage of 40 volts and an output of anywhere between 1.2 volts and 37 volts, depending on how we configure the output using two simple resistors. And the maximum output current is 1.5 amps. Well, great, that's a huge range. So let's say I have a design where I want to use, uh, where I have input of 24 volts. I've been working a lot with 24 volts lately. And I want the output to be 3.3 volts. And then the average current of the design I calculated to be about one amp. Well, if I just look at these specs for the LM317 in a D-Pack, looks like I'm fine. I'm well within the specs. But if we consider how much power is going to be dropped across this or dissipated by this D-Pack package, it's gonna be way too much. And the way we can do this is, you know, power, power equals current times voltage. So what we can do is a linear regulator, the input current equals the, the output current. So the current's constant, the change is the voltage. So we can use that to calculate what is gonna be the power dissipated by the chip. And so we subtract 3.3 volts from 24 volts, and we multiply that by the amps, which is just one amp. So we get 20.7 watts. That's a lot. If we put this in our design without some kind of, without a lot of cooling, uh, this chip is gonna burn up. Here's an example. What I just wanted to show here is if you just look at the voltage and current and don't consider the thermal effects, you could be in trouble. Okay, so how do we calculate the thermal specs or the thermal effects or how do we estimate how hot the chip's gonna get and how much power it's gonna dissipate and whether that's within the chip's normal operating range. Well, I grabbed some specs from uh, the LM317. I'm actually not showing the specs, I'm just showing the, the name of the specs, some of the thermal specs that we, we wanna look at. So there's a whole list of them, but we're gonna focus in this video just on junction to ambient thermal resistance, which is a spec that's established by doing a certain test, which I'll talk about later. But the manufacturer of the chip calculates this thermal resistance value. And then the other spec we're gonna care about here is this operating virtual junction temperature. So this represents the max temperature that the chip or IC can work at. And if we go above that, we risk damaging that chip or IC. Now you can see there's other specs here. I'm not gonna go into those in this video. I'll point you to a resource if you want to learn more about these other specs. We're just gonna focus with the junction to ambient thermal resistance and the operating virtual junction temperature. So a way we can 
calculate if our linear regulator is going to get too hot is by using this formula and making sure that TJ is not higher than the TJ spec of the chip or the IC in the data sheet. So I showed you already on the last slide how to calculate power. So we, we times power, the power that the chip is going to drop by the thermal resistance. And then TA represents the ambient temperature that the chip or IC is going to operate at. So you could use this as a range or you could say, okay, what is going to be the highest temperature this is going to operate at? 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. And then you add it to this result. If we take our previous example, that DPAC LM317, it has a thermal resistance of 50. So if we plug it, the 50 into this equation, remember we got the 20.7 watts on the last slide. Here's the 50. And then I just picked 25 degrees Celsius as the ambient temperature. And we can see we get 1060 degrees Celsius. But that chip is only rated for 125 degrees Celsius. It's operating virtual junction temperature. So we're almost in order of magnitude above that. So this chip would definitely burn up if we tried to use it in this situation. All right, let me talk more about some of these specs. And then also I'll do another example to kind of show that these specs can vary depending on the manufacturer. Unlike some calculations like Ohm's law, this is not a sort of scientific law type calculation. This is more of an estimate. And when I say, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the, the virtual junction temperature as well as the thermal resistance. These are a these are parameters that are established using a specified test by JDEC, especially this, this one, I guess I'm talking about specifically the thermal resistance. So JDEC is a standards group. And so they established the spec for, or established this test for doing the spec to make sure that manufacturers all do it the same way. And so the way it's done, I'm not going to get into the details, but you know, they use a, a specific test board with a specific test setup. And so because, your design is not going to be exactly how they do the test. This calculation is only an estimate. So it's not exact. So if you're going to use it, you just want to make sure you have enough margin, right? You don't want to use this calculation, have it right up against that, that virtual junction temperature or else you might be in trouble. So I just want to be clear that this is just a rough estimate. And why is it a rough estimate? Well, I mentioned that the test, is very precise on how it's done but your design you know your pcb the number of layers you have in your pcb the material of your pcb might be different the parts around the linear regulator might also put off heat so they may contribute to the overall heat of that area and so there's factors like that you have to consider as well as altitude so i grabbed this chart from the a ti texas instrument app note called semiconductor ic package thermal metrics so that's a great resource. Just look up that title in Google and uh, that's a great resource if you want to learn in more detail about some of these thermal specs. But from that app note, I grabbed out this table for altitude. So you can see as altitude goes up, these thermal effects get worse. And so for my calculation, my next example, I, I live in Colorado, Fort Collins, Colorado. And so we're about 5,000 feet above sea level. So I'm going to actually use this factor right here in my calculation to make it a little more accurate. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm going to do another example. And I want to show how these specs can actually vary from company to company. So if you look at two companies chip and they make the same exact chip, or at least the chip that does the same thing, sometimes and, and one is priced higher than the other, it might be because of specs like this, because a lot of people don't you know, if you're new to electronics, you may not consider these thermal specs. So here I, I just make up a test case. So like I said, I've been working with 24 volts lately. So let's say we have 24 volts in and I want to get five volts out. And my average current consumption is going to be about 110 milliamps. So first of all, I want to get the calculation of the watts that my regulator is going to be dissipating. So I take the current times the voltage across it and I get about 2.09 watts. And then I'm going to use an LM317 with it with a package TO220, which is shown here. It's a through hole package. Okay. So two companies make the LM37, actually more than two, but I picked two out LM317 with the TO220 package. And so company A 
we want to make sure you use the right package, right? So they have specs for multiple packages. Uh, we're going to use this one, the TO220. So they have a thermal resistance, a junction to ambient thermal resistance of 23.5. And then company B, who makes a DPAC and a TO220, they have a thermal resistance, thermal resistance junction to ambient. Remember, we want to make sure we use the right one, theta JA. Uh, and look, for the TO220 package, it has a rating of 50. So this one's more than double this other company. And that goes back to the quality of, of the IC. So for company A, if I'm gonna operate around 20 degrees C, and I do my, uh, my other calculations, remember the formula, we have the power times R theta JA. And remember, I'm gonna add my altitude factor because I live in Colorado, so I'm gonna add so this is, was for 5,000 feet above sea level, so it's 1.14, and I come out to 81 degrees Celsius. So what does that mean? That means if I'm using this chip in these conditions, this is gonna be the, the temperature of the, of the package, of the chip, of the junction. Its spec is 125 degrees C, so we're well within it. So even if I go above ambient temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius or 35 degrees Celsius, I'm still gonna be within the operating range of this chip. So this company A will work for me. If I do the same thing for company B, uh-oh, now I'm at 144 degrees Celsius. So basically, if I picked company B's IC, which is probably cheaper, I'm probably gonna burn it up if I use it in these conditions. So once again, just wanted to show the calculation again in action and wanted to show how this, this spec can vary from company to company. All right, and before I wrap up, I just wanted to mention, I thought, you know, if you do run into a situation where you're using a regulator, you know, one of the biggest factors of the power drop is input voltage to output voltage. So if you have a high input voltage and a low output voltage, you're probably gonna get a lot of heat at your regulator. So sometimes there's situations in your design where you're just gonna get a hot regulator for whatever reason, or at least you're gonna have a a hot power source, I should say. And so what are some of the things you can mitigate against that? So first of all, you could add airflow or heat sink to the regulator, right? So I can have airflow into the design, I can have heat sink and you know, doing calculations for that is much more complex. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but that's one way you can take away some of the heat so it's operating at a lower temperature. Another thing you could do is you could use a DC to DC converter instead. Now. This same calculation applies to DC to DC converters, but they tend to be much more efficient. So if you're dropping a lot of voltage or you're converting a large range of voltage, a DC to DC converter can be a, an answer instead of a linear regulator. And then another thing you could do is if you wanna stay away from DC to DC converters, you could have multiple conversion stages, right? So maybe I convert 24 volts down to 12 volts, and then I convert 12 volts down to five or 3.3 volts. So that way, each one of those chips is dropping some of the power, so you're gonna have less thermal problems with them. All right, that's all I had for how to calculate the thermal range of an IC. If you're an expert in this area, feel free to you know, mention anything you think I might've missed or add any comments to the section below or to the comment section in the video below. And also, if you have any questions, use the comment section below. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or hit the thumbs up on the video. Thank you for watching.